Hey there guys, my name is Marcus and in this video I will show you and explain to you how you can use Zendesk. Now Zendesk is really good uh, software for customer service that you can use and for solving issues uh, the customers will have or like questions. Now Zendesk is a pretty straightforward tool that you can use for solving all the tickets that you need. Now how to do it and how to use it. So when you're gonna enter Zendesk you can go through the get started and how you can work with it, how you can add it to your website, etc. But the most juicy stuff is under home, the views. In views, you would be able to see all the tickets that are unsolved. So let's say you're going to have a form on your website and you're going to connect Zendesk with the form. So automatically when there is going to be a ticket, you will see it right here. First, you can, we will, I will show you how you can change the views here. So I'll unsolve tickets recently updated tickets, everything. Then when I'm going to, let's say, click on a ticket that I have unsolved. On the left side, you will be able to see a requester, that's the customer. So let's say someone is going to fill up the form and uh, that's him or her. Then assignee, select assignee, support. You can have plenty of like groups here or uh, just automatically one person. I'm going to take it by myself. So let's say that you can take it or you can select a sign in. So like this one here or this one here. Then followers, add agents, admins or light agents as a followers to keep them informed on ticket progress. Follower names and addresses are not exposed in an email. This is really good if let's say the issue is on the technical side. So let's say some kind of customer uh, asked a question about a product and you're gonna have assign it to yourself that you are solving it but you're going to add a follower someone from technical department to follow up if everything is written correctly this is really good if someone is just starting out and someone can shadow right or like follow you if you are doing it correctly and then you're gonna see the tags here that you can actually add tags are really good let's say it will be technical so let's say i would add a tag like this so i can search and filter all the technical tickets that i solved uh, because i can have there are some good answers that i can just copy and paste and so solve it more quickly now this is how the left side works then when you want to reply to uh, the customer right here i can just start writing hi there thank you for writing up And here I have gonna see the public reply. I can enter a number. I can have an internal note for myself and for the team that I can add about this customer. As you can see, I can format the text. I can add the emoji. I can simply add attachments or I can add a link. Now, uh, the next thing under it is apply a micro. This is some macro. This is something that I will show you how we can do. So I can shift and enter how it looks like. We are currently experiencing usually high traffic. We'll get back as soon as possible. See, or I can apply macro customer not responding. Hello, the customer, our agent has tried to contact you. And I'm going to also show you how we can create the macro. It's really easy and really simple. So Thank you for writing up. And then on the right side, you would see the profile. What you can do also on the right side, you would see the three dots. You can create as a macro. You can merge in another ticket. You can mark it as a spam or you can delete it or you can print the ticket. So what I could do is create it as a macro. Let me show you. And here I would add a micro name, description, action we will get to it i don't want to uh, jump from one to things because i want to show you how we can do everything right so in the tickets when i'm going to show, click on a ticket you can see the profile here of the customer and interactions what was actually happening on this ticket let me show you then i'm going to click it back on the bottom right you would see that you can 
close the tab, next ticket in view and stay on the ticket. So what will happen when I'm going to submit, submit as a soft, pending or open? It will close a tab. Then I will have a next ticket in view or I'm going to stay on a ticket. So these are the options. So I can have it submit as solved, submit as a pending, submit as open. See? Then I can have it submit as a pending. Or submit as open. Completely up to you how you do it. So this is how we can make it. Now, but what you can do is also is next to the, the customer, you're going to see the ad. You can add a new ticket, user, organization or search. I can simply add a new user, but we will get to it. You can do it also in settings or you can simply add a new ticket and you can create a ticket by yourself, right? So I can add a user name, email and user or if it's a staff member and have a ticket directly created by me. So not just buying connected with, uh, let's say a form on a website, but on send this directly. So this is how we can do it. Now, when we go even further on the settings and settings are really important when you want to use Zendesk, you would go to people to manage. And here you can simply add a user. You can add a group or organization. So gmail.com see and this is the user I can see, simply create a new ticket on it subject let's say it will be technical difficulty one to three public reply submit as a new then let's say I would go uh, to tickets right here and see recently updated tickets technical difficulty and it will be from me then always when i'm going to submit it i can submit it as a new open pending solved completely up to you right when i'm going back to the settings i get to see the people here the user fields user fields you're going to have the active fields that you have here that you can use and you have option to add drop down list text Multi-line text, numeric, decimal, checkbox, regular expression, date. So let's say I'm going to add a checkbox. What is the title shown to agents? Let's say it will be description, tag, create a field. And you can have like multiple fields here right and this is how you can have user fields organization fields this is really similar but for organization not for the user then you would see a uh, brands here views now views this is what i was mentioning up when you would click on the views here this is something that you can edit in settings in views so you're gonna see the option have unsolved tickets unassigned tickets recently updated tickets pending tickets recently solved tickets so this is how we can do it and i can add a view new view would be ignoring tickets these are the ones that i am not going to solve even who has, who has access any agent conditions i can add a condition if it's going to be organization that it's always going can be in that view tickets can meet any of these conditions to appear in this view so if it's going to be that thing it can appear in the view then formatting options of the view and then click save so
that's how we do it now when you would click on the views you can also clone the view edit the view move to last position so i can recently update the tickets i can have to move to first position and now when i would come here to views see i got to see the unsolved tickets right here so it's pretty cool and pretty good right then on the settings we're gonna see the macros the macros that's something that you're gonna have like automatically uh, responses a macro is a prepared response or action that agents use to respond to support requests these are two these are two types personal macros create for an individual user and shared macros created by the administrator for everyone so i can simply click add a macro macro name technical macro description a macro for So this is macro call answer available for all agents and then add action and I can have set tags, add a tag, remove a tag, status, open, create. And as you can see, this is how we can do it. And then you see right here action. And this is completely different, right? Priority, low, common description. Then again, macro, I click on it. You can really get inspiration. Don't get inform. Priority, low, common description. So I can go again the same style. Add a macro. Technical. Add action, priority, low, comment description, and thanks for writing to us. We will look into it how I'm just making this thing up, but let's say create. And let's say now I would be I click on click on a ticket. And here you would be able to see the tickets. Why do you need to like refresh the website to see it? So this is how we can create the macros. Then you're gonna see the tags here. And then you're gonna see tags are words or combinations of words you can use to add more context to tickets. And then you would click on a ticket and you see on which one it was used. So this is really great here to filter it. Ticket fields, again, you can add a field here. So you can have assignee, group, priority, type, status. Ticket form, really similar to, I can add a form here. You can save it. A ticket form determines the fields and data in the ticket contains. Ticket forms can include system fields and any custom fields you create. You can create multiple ticket forms. For example, you might create different forms for different products. In that case, end user chooses the appropriate form to submit a request. Context panel. Dynamic contact. And this is pretty much it, how you use it, right? Then you're going to see the channels here. This is something that I don't know if you actually need. You can edit your account here. But the last thing that I want to show you is how you can report. So you need to have like Zendex Explorer here. And right here, activate Explore. And it needs to like do it for you. And it's going to take time uh, how we can do it. But this is how we can do also the reporting. Now, Zendesk is not that hard to understand and solve. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy uh, guide what you can do and how you can use it. If you can have any questions, guys, ask me down in the comments. I'm really happy to help you and provide some guidance. Always 
when you would click on a ticket and when you have the customer here, you would see all the tickets that needs to be sold for the customer. Security settings. And you can see on the left side access, the primary email, the tags here. And as you can see, this is something that we created for the user. I don't know if you remember the checkbox, right? You can have it for the users. So let's say I would go to the settings. And as I mentioned, the user fields here. So let's say I'm going to have a drop down list here. And now fill, fill title, it will be uh, how, how is this user? So let's say it will be good, bad, really bad. Just like playing around, right? Create a field. And then I would go back to the views, ticket, customer. And as you can see, how is this user? Good, bad, really bad. And as you can see, this is how we can work uh, with it and how we can edit the custom fields. This is something that you can add also for your organization that you would have. See? So we have the organization right here. This is something, let's say that someone would, you would have a form with the customer and also for the organization. And you could create simply the organization field exactly the same as for the user field. So in the settings, I would click and I would click on the organization fields. And I could have a, let's say checkbox. Create a field. And voila, here we got it. So this is pretty much it, how we can do it. And this is how we can work with the user fields. And the same with the macros. But when I'm going to have the technical difficulty here, you can really play around with the actions here, right? So if the status is open, Can go to tickets. So yeah, thank you very much guys for watching. This was a quick tutorial how we can use Zendesk. If you can have any questions, ask me down in the comments. I'm really happy to help you. Have a great day guys and goodbye. See ya.